The topic of the talk today is uh, renewal means release and uh, appropriate time, springtime, a time of renewal. We see everything um, letting go. Uh, we get to work out in our yards and, and clear up and release a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a powerful thing to give ourselves permission to let go and to release that which no longer serves us, breaking those old patterns. So uh, I want to read a parable. Uh, Jesus is in India, and uh, he's, uh, he's in northern India, so he's talking with a, there's a Buddhist festival going on, so he's talking to a group of people. And this parable is uh, the parable of the unkept vineyard and uh, vine dresser. So, uh, <clears throat> there was a vineyard all unkept. The vines were high, the growth of leaves and branches great. The leaves were broad and shut the sunlight from the vines. The grapes were sour and few and small. The pruner came, and with his sharp knife he cut off every branch, and not a leaf remained, just root and stalk and nothing else. The busy neighbors came with one accord and were amazed and said to him who pruned, You foolish man, the vineyard is despoiled. Such desolation. There's no beauty left. And when the harvest time shall come, the gatherers will find no fruit. The pruner said, Content yourselves with what you think, and come again at harvest time and see. And when the harvest time came, the neighbors came by to check it out. The naked stalks had put forth branch and leaf, and heavy clusters of delicious grapes weighed every branch to earth. The gatherers rejoiced as day by day they carried with the rich fruitage to the press. Behold the vineyard of the Lord. The earth is spread with human vines. So nature, we know this is the time to prune back all of our trees and shrubs and, and even the, the, the vines, the fruit of the vine, because if we cut it back, then the new growth will come and then the new fruit will come. And sometimes it seems like uh, an oxymoron to, to maybe do that. It's not really conducive to what's going on. But uh, we all know that. And when we do it the first time, we do it usually with faith. I hope this works because we're cutting back. <laughs> so, so a parable, uh, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And, uh, and that's like uh, kind of a song that Jesus gave to people with the, the parables. So the next phase, okay. Behold the vineyard of the Lord. The earth is spread with human vines. The gorgeous forms and rites of men are branches and their words are leaves. And these have grown so great that sunlight can no longer reach the heart. There's no fruit. Behold, the pruner comes, and with a two-edged knife he cuts away the branches and the leaves of words, and naught is left but unclothed stalks of human life. The priests and they of pompous show rebuke the pruner and would have him stay his work. For they see no beauty in the stalks of human life, no promise of fruit. The harvest time will come, and they who scorned the pruner will look on again and be amazed as they see the human stalks that seem to be fruitless, bending low with precious fruit. And they will hear the harvesters rejoice because the harvest is great. So, pretty good story, huh? It's our story. Renewal means release. Uh, when it comes to that moment in our life when we have to start doing the pruning, uh, it can be difficult. And uh, we get criticism from others. Like, what are you doing? You know, your life's going to change. You're not the same person. We hear this outer criticism and then we, to ourselves, we say to ourselves, we might doubt ourselves, what am I doing? Maybe I shouldn't let everything go. Maybe I shouldn't prune all this stuff and keep a few of these bittersweet grapes that I'm holding on to because they're familiar, they may be comforting to me, you know. And, uh, and, and sometimes we have that wrestling match with our angel when we fight ourselves. And this is what we need to say to ourselves. We got to remember, you know what? It's time to prune. It's time to prune. And I know everyone here has, has said that to himself at one point in their life, haven't they? It's time to prune. I'm ready to let this go, it's, it's no longer serving me. And really, it's stopping 
my growth, my expansion, my awareness. And, and so we do that. And even when uh, Jesus was telling this parable, uh, he was, the people at that time were just burdened with a, a lot of law and ritual and dogma. And they couldn't be who they were. They could not be who they were. They were living their life to law. They weren't living their life for God. They were living in outer instead of an inner life. And, and so that's what he was trying to reveal to them. And so when he starts stripping away all the laws that didn't have anything to do with love, and all the dogma that were just a bunch of words that people would sit, maybe even be confused about, but thought, well, maybe this person knows what they're talking about. And so he said, let's just cut to the chase. Let's just cut away these laws and these rituals. Let's cut away the dogma that's imprisoning the soul of man so that the man can begin to blossom forth in its <clears throat> unique expression. The human spirit needs pruning all the time. It needs to let go of the rituals of life to have a true relationship with God. It needs to let the sun shine to the core. It needs to let the Christ shine to the core. Because that's the food, you know not. That's the food that truly feeds us, our uniqueness, our unique expression, so we can begin to grow and blossom forth. The, the unique gifts, the unique expression, I am, you know. And that's the way that new fruit can be born. And, and so, and so uh, as he's talking with the people and, and telling them, you know, really a, a, a recipe of behavior modification, so they can begin to be true to themselves, honor their uniqueness, and honor the uniqueness in others. Begin to live in harmony with one another. And, and begin to understand and recognize what serves you and what doesn't serve you. What's going to uh, support you on your walk, in your path, in your unfoldment. We have that truth meter within our hearts. We have the power to discern. We have to turn that key. We have to engage in conscious awareness in our life. Okay. And um, so this uh, application, and, and, we, and we've all gone through it. A, a lot of people in this church have, were probably raised in a, in a different uh, religion or different discipline. And, and, and that's a big thing when, when you separate from the family, you know, because every, everyone's in, in going here and all of a sudden you're, you know, an outcast. And, and you hear the criticism and you hear the arguments and things, and, and that's when we have to go within now. Go within and listen to that inner voice, that inner guidance, that counsel of God, and that will give us the strength to continue our walk. And, and, and then begin to truly feed the soul, which will allow us to blossom forth, so that when we um, move through life, we're going to start moving through life and, and make changes in our personal life. And, and when we begin to make changes in our personal life, the people around us, the organizations around us, are saying the same things. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? And what we have to do is realize that <clears throat> when it comes time to prune that which no, ser no longer serves us or stunts our growth or limits us from being that unique expression, being the light, keeps us from being the light. You know, race consciousness. Race consciousness, you could see that as just a, this vine with these big leaves just wrap around us all. And then we have to live our life according to race consciousness, the way the world wants us to live. The worldly way. And when you try to extricate yourself from that vine and cut some of those branches off and prune it away so that the sun, so that we can begin to get that truth, that Christ's love radiant on us, call forth that light to shower over us so they can go to our core. Go to our core, that inner light, I am. And that begins to quicken that so that we can grow and blossom forth ourselves. The love that we have to give is, is, a, is a wonderful gift and a powerful gift. And as we begin to just recognize um, 
the people, the things, the energies that are uh, pressing upon us and limiting our expression of our uniqueness. And we understand it's time to prune. And it can be as simple as saying, I need my space. I need my space to be me. To be me. And that's a powerful time in anyone's life because you're claiming who you are. You're claiming your space. And you know what? And then when we know who we are, we claim our space back off just a little bit. Now the relationship that I have with you is going to be truly authentic and truly true. Because we're now expressing our uniqueness. We're expressing our love, who we really are. Not what people expect us to be or act like. So to begin to look at the, the race consciousness and, and the, the uh, mores of society, expecting us to look a certain way, act a certain way to do what an outer energy would want us to do. The teachings of Jesus is always to go within, to always go within and get your guidance because that's where your guidance is. Your perfect guidance lies within your heart. Seek ye first the counsel of God, the Father within. And, and then walk. Then walk and allow your uniqueness to, to grow forth and, and blossom. And blossom. So anything that keeps you from being who you are, anything that keeps you from being who you are, needs to be released. And a lot of times uh, that can get scary, but you know we can uh, still let things go and still have them, what we're doing is we're letting go of the attachment we hold to objects and people and places. So we let go of the attachment that we have. We can still have that experience. And how freeing is that? Very freeing. How freeing is that? So I'm just going to release my attachment that I have to, to, to um, pleasing someone, being who I am, and knowing that when one is healed, all are healed, I'm healed, and then that relationship can be healed. It's a, it's a simple recipe for life. And once we begin to understand uh, um, that uh, these uh, rituals that we live to, the laws that we live to, uh, covered with lots of words, doctrines, keep the light from shining within people. See, the laws of the land the laws that we hold within us on a conscious level, a subconscious level, an ancestral level, keep us from really being who we are. And when we begin to, to say, I need some space. You know, today, uh, a, a term that a lot of people like to do is they say, I'm getting off the grid. I want to get off the grid. I don't want to be connected to anything. So that I can just kind of be a little more independent and be who I am and live the way I want to live on a physical level. You know? But well, we, we don't have to actually separate ourselves from the world or society or from our family of man. We just have to be true to who we are. Just be true to who we are. And then our relationship with others will be true. To that own self be true. And surely as the night follows the day, thou canst be false to no man. To begin to understand how important it is for all of us to just be who we are. We all are the unique children of God. We're all good. We don't go to that good enough. We go to the outer. And those words and those laws and those doctrines, for the most part, don't make us feel good. And a lot of people are really now beginning to sever those cords and those ties so they can claim a little space for themselves, begin to understand and even know and move into who they are. And then take that next step to expressing that, being that. So as these uh, laws and, and words and dogma of race consciousness keep man from shining their light, they keep us from shining our light. To keep us from shining our light. Say, uh, I am the light of the world. Love is my only function. That's why I'm here. You are the light of the world. Love is your only function. 
That's why you are here. We are the love of the world. Love is our only function. That's why we're here. That's why we're all here. And we all have our own unique sound. We have our own unique song. And if we just allow that to flow from us, it's not the words we speak. It's the energy that we allow to flow, flow freely from us. That's the uniqueness. Say, so, uh, keep your own air light alive. Fruit, the light, comes from nurturing man. So, fruit from man, the light that we are allowed to flow, that we can flow, comes from nurturing man, not from obeying laws. See, that got Jesus in trouble because they were living in the time of laws. So, nurturing man allows that light to be born and to begin to express not following laws. Not following laws. Not following man's laws. And that's a pretty dynamic um, paradigm shift, which we're experiencing now in, in, uh, in the awareness that we have with raising our families, allowing or giving those children a whole lot more love than some of us seasoned ones got when we were young. The world's changing. Love is beginning to grow and expand and blossom forth across the board. It's part of our natural evolution as beginning to live as that spiritual being, as that child of God, I am. It's a powerful time that we live in and we're all being asked now to participate our own, our own level. So to look at, to take stock of what's limiting me, what's smothering me, what's keeping me from allowing me to express my uniqueness from singing my song and, and then claim that space. I need to claim some space here because you know what, I'm going to be better in the long run and we're going to be better in the long run because we're going to be happy. That's the key to life. We don't lose when we let go. We don't have to lose when we let go. We let go of the attachment. The energy is still there. We are always connected. We are one. We are one. But we have to make that move. We have to make that move to, to begin to not only ask, who am I? But then to begin to explore that consciousness, that expression. To begin to understand how this vehicle, this instrument works. Understand how this instrument works. It's, we don't have a clue of what we're capable of. But we're beginning to move in that direction. I did my first text yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a smartphone. Congratulations. It, it's crazy. And my first text was, okay. See, isn't that easy? Okay. No typing out words or anything. Okay, I can do that. You, you see, I'm giving myself permission to, to grow and expand, to move out of an older identity, you know, to maybe be in stock. Hey, it's where I am. Sorry. Deal with it. Deal with me. It's a, no, I'm going to integrate with all you people now. And the younger kids, for sure, they all have cell phones, or smartphones, not cell phones, smartphones. So, so once we begin to uh, understand that we have this wonderful light within us, and that it may be covered up by some belief systems that we've accepted, outer precepts and laws that we've accepted, but we are not blind any longer. We live in the age of light. That's what's so fascinating. Age of Aquarius, the age of light, the age of spiritual enlightenment, the age of communication. It's awesome. And this is what's available to us now. And it's not an accident. This is our blessing. Receive the gift. Receive your blessing and participate in life at a higher level of expression. See, how's this? The dogma or precepts of race consciousness keep man from expressing his unique light. Wow. 
And we all get caught in that sometime, don't we? We're working on not as much, and that's cool. And so when we catch ourselves, nurture ourselves. See? Nurturing of man allows the light to blossom forth. So we can't be critical and judgmental with ourselves. We can say, silly me. Moving right along. I have some steps for you to take. Spirit's got steps for you to take. I'm washing my hands. Okay. The first step, which is very, I thought, profound from our divine dip, and the word in that that was really key was confidence. Okay? So the first step that we have to have is confidence. We have to have confidence in ourself. When we get that guidance, we've got to have confidence. Then we've got to have confidence in God, because God's within us all. So the first step is to have confidence. When we don't have confidence, that's when we second guess ourselves or we listen to that outer voice and nothing happens. So we have to have confidence. Confidence in the God within, the inner guidance, and confidence in the God manifesting through our life. The second uh, step is to have courage. To have courage. Be courageous in following your guidance. Following the guidance and taking the step. <laughs> Be courageous. You know, there's that old saying, they're a legend in their own mind. Mm -hmm. You see, they're pretty confident in their abilities, but a lot of times it doesn't translate into the walk. So when we just are courageous, we'll become a legend in our life. And you know what? Every one of you are legends in your life. I will guarantee you and bet you a million dollars that each one of you knows someone in your life who loves you and respects you for your unique gift that you give to them. You are all legends in your life. You all have that unique gift that you're given every day. And maybe not everyone recognizes it, but a lot of people do recognize it. And sometimes it's after the fact. You know, you might get a letter or something. But we are all impacting people all the time. Because we have courage enough to follow our inner guidance, to say something sometime, when maybe someone else wouldn't say it. But we're getting that guidance. Share this with them. And so we share that with them. We don't have to have the answers. Allow that spirit to flow through you. Allow love to flow through you. Allow that energy to flow through you. And that's the gift that we can be. So we're going to be confident. We're going to have courage. And then the next step is to, is to have respect, to, to respect others and to respect ourselves. We're all souls, we're all unique, and we got our own path to walk on. And as we respect others and allow them their path and respect our self and allow us our path, you see how it can work out? We cannot ask for respect for respect without giving respect. Doesn't work. It's against the law energy. So, so, to, so to begin to, to just, you know, honor the uniqueness of your brother or your sister. You don't have to follow them. You don't have to even listen to them. Honor them as a soul, as a fellow traveler on this path of life, as a child of God. And they got their own path, they got their own lesson that they came for. But let's get on with ours. And a simple thing to do is just just to say to ourselves, this is my path. Those are empowering words when we say, this is my path. Because we start owning what we're doing. Hey, I need you to do this for me. It's not, it's not our path. We get our inner guidance, this is our, this is our path. So when we say, this is my path, and then we understand that we're on our path, we're going to get the inner guidance of what is ours to do. What steps are we to take? And allow everyone their own journey. And then the fourth step, which is easy, which you all know. What do you think the fourth step is? Anybody got a guess? Starts with L. Love. Love. <laughs> love. It, it, the whole thing is allow love to be the foundation. Allow love to flow freely to be the gift. To be the gift. You know, we are love. See, we are love. With these little beings of love. That's who we are. See? Uh, every light that lighteth every man, every woman who cometh into the world. You see? 
that lights within us. It's that spark of the Christ, and Christ is love. And as we begin to just allow that light to grow and allow that love to flow, you know, all, all we have to do is then just be, just be, be who we are. We're love. We don't have to work at it. We don't have to think about it. We just have to be our uniqueness, our unique expression. And, and, and look around and prune that which blocks our love. You see? Which limits it? Which, which keeps us from taking the steps that we know are our path. Just be. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Let's go with them. So I want you to close your eyes once again and just breathe. Breathe in, in that holy breath. Breathe in love. We've created a sacred space of love and just breathe and feel that love filling you and wrapping around you and holding you. Ever safe in God's love. So just breathe and as you sit in this love, just become aware of a radiant column of light showering over you now. And just feel that light showering over you now. See yourself sitting in this radiant column of light. And as you breathe, just feel how good it feels to be in the light. Breathe it in, drink it in. Appropriate this light, the living light. And as you sit in the light and it quickens your energy field and expands your vision from your heart, from your heart, ask to see, ask to see if there are any laws or dogma or ritual in your world, your physical world, that are limiting to your unique expression of love. And you might see something, you, you might hear something, you just might know it intuitively. And in your right hand, there's a wand of light. And I just want you to, to, to cut that branch or that leaf from your energy field. That's blocking that radiant light from entering into your core. Just take that wand of light and just cut all the branches and leaves that, that might be pressing down upon you, limiting your pure expression. And just feel the intensity of the light getting greater. Just breathe. Breathe and, and feel that love just permeate your being. Feel your heart. Feel your heart begin to quicken now as that light goes right to your heart. And just be aware of your heart as it begins to grow and expand in its unique radiance. The unique radiant love, the unique radiant light I am, growing and expanding as it floods through your whole body now. And just see your body filled with light. From the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet to your fingertips, the radiant light I am. And just breathe, breathe and feel your radiance, your unique vibration. Breathe and feel. Breathe and know. Know this vibration. This is who you are. This is who I am. So just breathe and just allow this vibration of love and light to be. Breathe and be. Be and breathe. Be still and know, I am.
I am with you always. So just take a breath. Gently wiggle your toes and fingers. And gently open your eyes. This week as we go forth, your homework to have confidence in yourself. To have confidence with God. To be <clears throat> courageous. Take that step that you've been postponing. Be courageous in following your guidance. Honor your uniqueness as you honor the uniqueness in others. And love. Be that vibration that you just felt, that you just are. Be the love. That's a gift. That unique love and light is nurtured with love, not by following laws, by nurturing love. Yeah, God. Yeah.